interesting being confirmed same teaching towards the bottom whether it was prior to the Messiah or after we're going to see the same exact teachings in the Brit Hadashah you ever see any servant bought with silver paid for when you have circumcised him then let him eat of it then he can partake of it then he can come to the mountain and he can go into the kingdom see 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and in verse 20 for you were what? bought with a price therefore esteem Elohim in your body and in your spirit which are of Elohim we were bought by Yahshua fulfilling this law in the covenant we had to be bought with silver which represents redemption he paid the price for us he bought us and now we have the right to be circumcised and to eat of the Passover and the blood be applied to the mantle of our hearts the doorpost the gateway for Yahweh is your heart sanctified by the blood? He can come in. You can fellowship, go in and out. First Corinthians five seven. How did it all happen? Therefore, cleanse out the old leaven, so that you are a new lump, as you are unleavened. For also Messiah, our Passover was what offered for us. He paid the price. He was the Lamb. He was the King. He was the Redeemer that has been that we've been reading about, that Israel was waiting on. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Stranger and sojourner continued in the Brit Shah. We're going to see here. Look at this in the Torah. We see Yahweh's words. Oh, we already, we already, excuse me. Shaul or Paul makes this very clear in Ephesians chapter 2, 12 through 13, that at that time you were without Messiah, excluded from the commonwealth or citizenship of Israel, and what? Strangers. So we, we were estranged for the covenant because of our sins. What happened? Strangers from the covenants of promise, having no expectation and without Elohim in the world. The covenants of promise that are recorded in the Law of the Prophets have something to do with what we are, our goal is in the body of Yahshua according to these verses. It's not about another people receiving the kingdom other than Israel. It's about we were estranged, that the wife was estranged, was put away by the husband because of her unruliness. And those who were afar off, kicked out of the house, have now been brought near. And the price has been paid for your sins so that you can enter back into the kingdom and the house. Guess what? You have responsibility as a wife in the house. But now in Messiah Yahshua, you who once were afar off have been brought near by the blood of Messiah. It's the same exact teaching that was seen in the Torah. They were far off in Egypt. They applied blood to the doorposts of their homes. They were brought out of bondage. The price was paid. And those who were estranged and away from Yahweh were brought to the mountain. And they, they said, I do. Then they were eligible to go into the kingdom. Same exact teaching. So I submit to any charismatic people that are caught up in your chanting, explain that. It's the same story, same process, cover to cover. Yahshua is the one who guides us back to the Kodesh Mountain. He's not taking you directly into the kingdom. He's taking you back to the mountain first. We just read that in the prophecy. The messenger that would be sent would be bringing 
bringing you back to the mountain. You think that because you've received the Savior that you're going directly into the kingdom when you die, and that is not what the prophecy says. For years we have not been able to see this in most English translations of the sacred scriptures for such reasons as this. For example, Romans chapter 10, verse 4 in the King James Version, it says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Guess what? <clears throat> Strike one. That Greek word there does not mean end. But anti-Semitic people and people who want to live lawless lives translated it in. Romans 10, 4, put it under the microscope. Here we will see the study in English of the word in in that verse. It's the Greek word number 5056, telos, to set out for a definite what? Goal? Properly the point aimed at as a limit. That doesn't mean in as it over. Matter of fact, this Greek word does not have a defi definition of end at all. As if the period of time had stopped. Therefore, it is clearly a mistranslation. <coughs> Purposely, I believe, some people say just an honest mistake. But that we're, we're going to yeah, we're going to check it out because here is the proper translation of that out of the scriptures. For Messiah is the what? Goal. goal. And that law means the Torah there. He's the goal of the Torah. In other words, if you focus on the Torah, you're going to walk Messiah-like. Where's Messiah leading us? Back to the mountain. He showed us in the flesh. If you don't want to read about it, just watch what he did. Simple. He's made it very, very easy for us to be accessible to the mountain. <coughs> Follow the Messiah. And the very next verse, if you don't stop there, which they always love to do that, says, Romans, Romans 10 5 says, For Moshe writes about, wait a minute, who wrote about it? I thought the Torah didn't have anything to do with our relationship with Yahweh now that the Messiah had given his blood sacrifice. Not according to this. For Moshe writes about the righteousness which is of the Torah, of the law, the man who does these shall what? Live, Live by them. And this doesn't mean that the Torah, the written words, redeemed you. The blood redeemed you and paid the price. But once you come into the fold, you must live by the instructions of the Torah to stay in the kingdom. We don't follow the law to be saved. We follow it because we are, we saved. are saved. Hallelujah. Was it just 
Jews and Israelites. It was a mixed multitude. It was just people. Just people saying, I do. The people actually said all the words which Yahweh has spoken, I do. We shall do. <clears throat> now, what ratified this covenant in the days of Moshe? Exodus 24, 7 and 8 tells us. And he took the book of the covenant. Here we see the Torah present. This is what ratified the marriage. The messenger, who was Moses, had the book of the covenant present. Torah. And read it in the hearing of the people. First you must accept this. And they said, all that Yahweh has spoken, we shall not only do, but what? It's a household rules, that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And Moshe took the blood. Uh oh, let's see. The book of the covenant, the blood is present, and he did what? Sprinkled it on the people and said, see the blood of the covenant which Yahweh has made with you concerning these words. The Torah is present in the covenant and the blood. It's been that way since the Exodus. Same good news. What ratified the covenant in the days of Yahshua? Matthew 26, 28. For this is my, the blood is present. For this is my blood, that of the renewed, there's the covenant. Which is shed for the which is shed for many for forgiveness of sin. Matthew 27, 25, and all the people answering said, His blood be upon us and our children. Do you understand what happened? They were saying, crucify him, kill him, give us Barabbas, set him free. And Pilate said, I will have nothing to do with the shedding of this innocent man's blood. You see to it. And they said, let his blood be upon our heads. They don't know what they were asking for. It had to be upon them. He sprinkled them with the blood, just as Moshe sprinkled them with the blood of the land at the, at the uh, covenant at the mount. It's the same exact process. What does all of this lead us to? Revelation 19.7. Marriage of the Lamb. Partaking of the covenant. You can partake of the Lamb now. And what does the Lamb produce? Eternal life. From the mountain, out of Egypt, to the mountain, and into the kingdom. Same exact order. Using the same exact process. Is the new or renewed covenant a different covenant? The previous set of scriptures speaks of the new covenant, or New Testament, some people see, as translated in most English versions. They see it as new covenant. New comes from the Greek word number 2537, and it's kenus. And it means new, especially in different. No? It's not a different covenant? No. It's been refreshed. The covenant that, part, that, was, that was given at Mount Sinai has now been refreshed by the blood of Yahshua. There's a priesthood. There's blood. There's the book of the covenant. Everything is still there. And it's been refreshed, not replaced. And it's not a different covenant. It is a reestablished or renewed covenant. The marriage vows stamped again. That same Greek word is used in the Septuagint. How do I know that? Because I have a Septuagint now that is coded to the Greek strongs. So I can look up these words really quick and say that English word is this Greek word and that Hebrew word. Hallelujah. Yahweh wants us to know these things. The Septuagint, this, this word new, is used in the, in, the, in the Greek Torah 
in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, where it says, I will make a new covenant with the house of Yehuda and with the house of Israel. And it's not a different covenant. It's a new, refreshed covenant. So that English and Greek word is comes from the Hebrew word used there for new. New and strong Hebrew section 2319 is kadash. I'll be darned. Does that have something to do with the new moon? That's not a different moon. It's the same moon. What? Really? Every time it goes around and, it, and we don't see it, it comes back, it's a different moon? No. It's a refreshed, renewed moon. Just like the covenant. Same Hebrew word. It's not a different covenant for a different people, for a different reason. What we've learned so far, just as Yahweh spoke to Moshe at the burning bush and told him to bring the people out of bondage back to, this, to his mountain to serve him, Yahshua is bringing us, bringing this to pass even as we speak right now. Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> In the latter days, time of the new covenant, Micah 4, 1 through 2. And in the latter days, that's a prophecy, it shall be that the what? Mountain. Going back to the mountain in the latter days. Going back to where we started this, honey. Going back to the altar. We're going to reestablish these vows that we made. And I'm going to give you a second chance because I love you and I want to be with you. Don't you ever cross me again. Don't you ever make one of our children have to be sacrificed. Do you understand the concept? Don't you ever sacrifice another one of our seed because this is mystical God. It's more than family. You caused one of the offsprings of our family to have to die in order to make this happen. But hallelujah, he lives. He lives so that we can live in him. And he has paid the price for us. The mountain of the house of Yahweh is established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. And people, not Israel, not Hebrews, not Jews, but people shall flow unto it. All people, all walks, all colors. And many nations shall come and say, come up and let us go to the mountain of Yahweh. To the house. Where's this house going to be? It's going to be formed at the mountain of Elohim of Yaakov and let him teach us his ways, the Torah, the book, the covenant. And let us walk in his paths. For out of Zion comes forth the what? The Torah is going to be present when? In the latter days. And the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. We're going to bypass this. Hi, I'm Teddy Wilson again. Hope you were refreshed. Seekers of Yahweh Ministry. There's our website. We're continuing on. <laughs> now we're going to go to these two words because these words get tossed around by every religion I have ever seen, or people use it towards every religion I have ever heard of. Guess what? Say what you will. Yahweh doesn't have a problem with these things, is what we're going to learn. These are a product of man's tradition. Are they biblical terms? And what does Yahweh declare about them? Cult. You guys have a handout on that? You can look at that. Uh, whatever you can, you can, you can Google it and look at all the information on it. But I've given you some, some uh, handouts there to kind of touch on the base. Much of the church sect typology concerning the concepts of cults and new religious movements are based on, for the most part, two men's views. There's Howard P. Becker, along with the German theologian. Uh-oh. Those Yahweh people, those old Jews, huh, were a cult right away.
German theology here. I can't even pronounce the last name, so we'll just we have to look at that. It's probably one year old. <clears throat> the concept of cult. Now, this is historical information that I found on, on the word. The concept cult as a sociological classification is very recent, dating back to only around 1932 by Bennett. You know what happened in the United States around 1932? The sacred name movement of the father in the United States began to run rampant. Here is the enemy's counterpunch around the same time. We're going to start labeling all of these religious factions cults. Yahweh's name began to be proclaimed for the most part right out of Pennsylvania. Elder Jacob O. Myers took, well, shared the stage with his son at the uh, uh, the conference. And you could tell he was raised in it. Hallelujah. It was such a blessing to share the stage with all of those elders. To open up for them. I was humbled. I was so humbled to be a servant of Yahweh and be blessed with that honor to open up for some of the most important men in the United States that have been doing this all their lives. And I was invited and they paid to get me there. They wanted me there. They want all of us there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wanted all of us there. Believe that. Yeah, they wanted you there. The concept of cult as a sociological classification is very recent, coming from around 1932. And these men helped pave the way for denominationalism. Mm -hmm. Hack, 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 hack. We're starting hack, hacking up the bodies, making the true body hard to find. Got to know the identification. The word cult was first used in the early 17th century. Yahweh never used it. Borrowed from the French culte, from the Latin cultus, which just means worship. <laughs> Which is derived from the Latin verb coer, which means to care and cultivate. <laughs> but if you don't care and cultivate and worship the way one man worships, he can say, you're a cult now, because you don't do it the way I do it. Yahweh has different titles for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, don't worry about cult. Yeah. Most importantly, this word is not found in Scripture at all. The history of a cult. Occultism is labeled as the study of such practices as, now we're going to start seeing some biblical terms used. Magic, spiritualism, divination, interpretation of occultism and its concepts can be found in the belief structures as what? Philosophy and I, world religion here. Religion such as Gnosticism, theosophy. The, see this? Sophists. You know how we say it's, he's sophisticated? That is bad mojo. Mm -hmm. The sophists were a group of men of wisdom, homosexuals, philosophers that were warped in world customs. And they created world knowledge. They opened schools. This had nothing to do with, and this is the, the Greek word we see for theo, is, is for G-O-D. Wicca, and what has now been deemed as paganism. Here we see that a man has given a new title to a class of things spoken against by Yahweh and his Torah. It's, it, it's, a, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a tradition of man. It has nothing to do with Yahweh. This word also comes from the French and Latin origins as well, and its study thrived in between the 15th and 17th centuries. Now, we do see some things here. But notice the man has labeled it something else and used it for his own means. Who is at work in that, snatching stuff out of scripture and changing it? And the word game. Okay. What is the scriptural definition of the underlying words above? Magic, which is deception. Spiritualism. Everybody who spiritualizes everything about the word. Well, the spirit revealed it to me this way. 
And you're already saying, well, the Spirit wouldn't work in you. So everybody can just spiritualize everything and say, well, you know what? The Holy Spirit showed me that that means this. And whether it contradicts the Word or not, they say, but the Spirit revealed it to me. If you think that the Holy Spirit, the Kodesh Spirit that we're speaking about that was at that mountain, is going to give you a revelation that totally contradicts and is so out of line scripturally with what is written in the Word, you need to back up and punt. You are so far doctrinally out of line. Come on now. This is how you test the Spirit. Let's say you have a vision or a dream where you think Yahweh revealed something to you. Compare it to the Word. Has He ever shown anybody else this? And if it comes to making a decision about your family, well, I think the Spirit is leading me to do this, but I know it's going to it's going to have me working on the Sabbath and all my kids are going to be playing ball on the Sabbath and this is going to take place. Everything's up. That's not Yahweh's DNA. Uh -huh. Yahweh's DNA is, I'll use myself as an example. I was up here out of work for over a year. I had the chance to go work on an oil rig making big money. I said, no, I can't work on Shabbat. So what did I do? I went broke! <laughs> okay, so what happens? I'm cutting wood for a living, and I'm driving down in there cutting wood every day, and all of a sudden one day I hear this guy going, hey! And I look up at this old foundry, and there he was. Come here. He'd been watching me work every day, loading cords of wood by myself, cutting it, throwing it in the truck. And he said, You still looking for a job? I said, Yep. You want to hire me? I said, but I can't work on Saturdays, and I'm going to ask you, I'm going to have to ask you for two weeks off right away, and then in the following weekend, i got to have off as well. And he went, really? Why? And I explained it to him. He goes, well, I guess we can work around it. So I went to work for two weeks. We went to this, the seminar there, and then had this Friday off halfway through the day to come here. Whose thumbprint is on that? Mm -hmm. I never have to work on Shabbat. He said that he'll work with me on the, on the feast. See, Yahweh's fingerprint is on that. Mm -hmm. Take care of it. Hallelujah. Worry about it. So then we see that um, we see the word spiritualism, magic, philosophy, and I put world religion in there because we're going to see that here. The word says that Yahweh defines these things as what? Let's talk about abominations, all you who want to point fingers at us and call us a cult. <laughs> Do you worship? On December 25th? Are you hunting Easter eggs that used to be dyed in the blood of a dead tomb? There were sacrificed to these fertility gods. Are you following pagan customs and calling other people a cult when you are abominable in the eyes of Yahweh? Matters not what you call us. Matters what God is. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 through 14. Let no one be found among you who makes his son or his daughters pass through the fire. Or one who practices divination, user of magic, or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer, one who conjures spells or medium or a spiritist, spiritualizing everything. Or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these are what? I rest my case on the word of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These things are abominations. They have nothing to do with an occult. And the people who are actually calling people an occult are living a life of abominations in the eyes of the one they think they serve. And because of these abominations, here's going to be the penalty for that. He spoke it. Yahweh said, and because of these abominations, Yahweh Elohim drives them out from before you. He said, I'm going to cast out the people that are in the nations where I'm going to transplant you to from Egypt. Because they're doing these things, I'm going to put you in there. Then, what happens? They begin to practice the same thing, and you kick them out. And now the church is telling you that you can perform the same things and go in and inherit it anyway. <laughs> Yahweh's going to dis disinherit two other groups of people and then replace them with a group of people that's already being disobedient? Right. No. Come on. Yeah. 
The mighty one I serve does not operate like that. Right. Yeah. Be perfect before Yahweh your Elohim for these nations. And they all have a religion, or more than one. That's why I put the word religion. And these nations who all have religions whom you are possessing to listen to those using magic and to deviners. But as for you, yeah. as for us, Yahweh your Elohim has not appointed such for you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> We can't spiritualize everything, especially if it contradicts the written word. You better know you're in error. It says, test the spirits. Are they speaking to us? Is this, is this word, is it, I mean, is it in you? Is it in your heart? He's looking for these laws and these commandments that are in this word to be written on your heart in the new covenant. Which is a reestablished covenant. It is a stipulation that you're in covenant with him in the new covenant. When he sees the commands on your heart, churchanity is keeping you and training you not to be in covenant with him every Sunday. That stuff was nailed to the cross. How are you ever supposed how is he ever supposed to see the covenant written on your heart if they say it's been done away with? Where we're going. This is where Yahshua is taking us. Zoom in on that, Brother Vance. Get a good look at that. All you critics out there, I love you. But if you want to make it to that, you need to repent and start teaching the people that they need to be obedient to Yahweh's word to accept and embrace these names that are biblical. And you need to accept and be immersed. In the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. For the remission of your sin, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is the land and eternal life. The Holy Spirit was Yahweh. Yahweh is the Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And that Spirit has a name, and it's Kodesh. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is the Holy Spirit. Yes. He came down out of heaven and overshadowed Mary. When a man overshadows a woman, he puts his seed in the woman, correct? Mm -hmm. Then where did the seed come from that was planted in Hallelujah! He redeemed his people from their sins. And he's giving us a way back to the Holy Mountain. So you can call us what you wish. But as for me and my house, you and your house, Absolutely. Yahweh. We're serving Yahweh. we shall serve Yahweh. Yahweh. We're going to do what he said to do so that we can get back to the mountain and bring honor and glory to his kingdom. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. We thank you so much for your word, for the blood that was shed. I ask blessings upon each and every soul in this room. Protect us as we journey back home. Thank you for this opportunity. And we bless you and baruch you, Father. And thank you for your many gifts. And we pray this in the name of your son, Meshach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.